This episode of Capes and Lunatic Sidekicks is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off free shipping and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. Hey, what about that comic capers? What about us? <laughs> what about the comic capers? With my best Matt Kona. That's right, welcome to comic capers. Smack in the middle of our no man's land review. Part eleven. I am Phil. That's right, we're still got it. I am Phil and joining me as always <laughs> the clown princess of crime over there. It's Lil Hellfire! Only eight more episodes to go after this. <laughs> Plus how many very many episodes of Gotham we're doing. <laughs> yeah, ten more of those. If be... only we had the real Joker in Gotham. I know. I still, I still think of him as the Joker. Even though he showed, I've seen the pictures of him in the suit. I'm just like, you're too young, kid. Come back in ten years. <laughs> yeah, was, was that ever, that's not the same thing everyone says about Batman on that show. <laughs> he's Bruce. He's bat. He's a batling. <laughs> Whatever you call baby bats, I'm not sure. Alright, so... Uh, this is, um, a lot of Batman. A it, lot of Batman. Uh, I don't know about that. I mean, it's basically five, I'd say, you know, five issues, like three different stories. Batman's only big in, like, one of them, I'd say. Two. Two. Did you read the right thing? I did. Okay. It's Low Mountain and uh, the Code, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'd say two. The first two that we're going to talk about, he's kind of... I mean, Lynx is a kind of a focus, but he's still there. Well, that's what I mean, Low Road. Yeah, he's big in that one, but yeah. not the Code. Not the Code. That's okay. And before we get to any of that, do you want to do the Azrael issue or first or last? I thought we'd just go in order of the storyline. Okay. Line. okay. <laughs> Ezreal wasn't that bad. Because, you know, Leslie makes things bearable. Yeah, yeah. So. All right, then I guess we're... Right into it. We're starting with the two-part uh, Low Road to Golden Mountain from Batman Legends of the Dark Knight 122 and Batman Shadow of the Bat number 90, both October 1999. Okay, just a really quick question before we get into it. Hmm. Links 1 or Links 2? Who's your favorite? There's two Lynxes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I don't know. I've been here with Lynx since the beginning. I mean, the first one holds a certain place in my heart, but... Um, Tim Drake! <laughs> well, yeah, the second one <laughs> kind of held something else with Tim Drake's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like the second one because she's definitely more solidly, firmly anti-hero. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a sucker for an anti-hero, so... But we get, like, the origin of the first Lynx in this one. Yeah. And a return of our friend. get a back. flashback. Kingsnake. Hey, didn't we mention Kingsnake earlier? Yeah, we <laughs> did. Yeah, because you said about Bane's dad. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I was, just, I was like, oh, yeah. This oh, yeah. guy. Did you, did you, did you see, uh, I, I don't know if it's Larry Hama messed up, but uh, maybe get an insight into his uh, musical taste because he called him White Snake. Yes. <laughs> Hey man, nothing wrong with a little white snake. I believe Lois Lane on Smallville is a white snake. <laughs> Phrasing. <laughs> no, I stand by it. I stand by it. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. On that uh, note. <laughs> um, I think I think you are missing Wade's world a little bit too much, Philip. <laughs> I know, I know. Anyway. <laughs> But yeah, the return of our friend Larry Ham uh, writing this, because, you know, he, of course, he had to mention Mr. Freeze, and yeah. hey, hey, the power plant got blown up, so it's like, where's Chinatown getting all this electricity? Hmm, let's investigate! <laughs> and Batman finds, you know, prostitution and gambling is, like, up and running in Chinatown, which, okay, are they, tri are they bartering for services and gambling and stuff? Because I'm like, who has money in No Man's Land? 
Oh, yeah, they're definitely bartering. I got a uh, Stabby Babs vibe all the way. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, like, Batman is just, like, cold-hearted in this one. He's like, I see you guys are, like, tearing yourselves apart, so I'll just go to see some decent folk right now <laughs> who need some actual help. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, burn! And, and I know, it's just depressing. Like, the dogs eating the dead and stuff, and just... Yeah, just another day in Gotham. Just Guess the, the dogs are part of too, you know. You know, the ones that haven't been eaten. Yeah. Which I felt like, oh, it's a rever- it's a reversal of a stereotype. So I, I, I don't know. You know, like they say some Asian people eat dogs, which is kind of true. Oh. But then it's like, oh, revenge. Like, I don't know if that was just me. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I do. Dogs don't tend not to like human flesh. They have to be super, super hungry. And I'm assuming they're still trash to be eaten. Just mm-hmm. saying. And this, I, don't, I guess it's just the artist, but like. Uh, the Batman suit's just giving me, like, uh, Michael Keaton vibes. Oh, yeah. Face and all, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, hey, it held up until Batman Begin started. Fight me about that. <laughs> <laughs> it Hold did. Up. It was a decent, it was a decent Batman movie. Held up till Batman Forever. <laughs> no, like I said, it held up till Batman Begins. Okay. <laughs> I pretend like the the Joel Schumacher stuff doesn't exist. It goes yeah. Batman, Batman returns, Batman begins. Yeah. <laughs> like, nothing else. <laughs> you look at my collection. Yeah, that's what it seems like. <laughs> but um, yeah. So like, Lynx is killing a dog, and we see these enslaved people, and I'm like, this is a little dark. And um, this is the part that the Gotham TV show actually is. I think it's pulling it from a little bit. Yeah, they they should, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they had this where like you know someone was enslaving people to uh, create create electricity by riding bikes. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's next. That comes next episode. <laughs> yeah. If you're not watching Gotham's final season, shame on you. Throw those damn people a bone. <laughs> especially, especially child la- you know child slave labor. Better than digging a tunnel that'll get you killed by drowning. <laughs> <laughs> Also reminds me of the Black Mirror episode 15 Million Merits. I know you don't watch it, but I'm sure everybody else does. <laughs> okay, everyone but me. <laughs> you should watch it. You might like it. If you like Twilight Zone, you'll like Black Mirror. I keep meaning to. Anyway, yeah. This, this, it was a little dark, but it seemed like a short story. Yeah, well, it is a two-parter, but yeah. It I mean, it just flew by, and I'm like, oh, okay. Well, the first one's a lot of setup. It's like, hey, where's all this electricity coming from in t- Chinatown? Then Batman meets up with Lynx, and it's like, why do you care about, you know, yeah. you're a criminal. Why do you care about people? Uh, well, spoiler, or, you know, foreshadowing, she won't after this. <laughs> 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 Which you can't blame her. Um, so, yeah, then we continue into Shadow of the Bat. Uh, Number 90, yeah. Yeah. And then, like, Batman basically gives her the spiel about being a hero, and I, I don't think we've heard this from Batman at this point for quite a while. Last mm. time he was lecturing a Robin, <laughs> I'm sure, it was the last time we heard that, but yeah, positive role model was just like, wow, I did not want to end on this note, but no. we did. And it's like, can a, can a woman get a decent shirt in No Man's Land? <laughs> No. And it's just like, on the cover, I was just like, are they going for the Wonder Woman pants era vibe? Like, what in the world? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a different artist on these covers, yeah. Yeah. I, th- I want to say, I don't know, I don't think it was, but I feel like I've, I've seen a variation of this cover somewhere, and I can't, I don't know if it had a variant or not, but I feel like it did. Mm, it wasn't the first part, or was it? <laughs> No, not the first part, the second. Okay. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so the Fist of Heavenly Serendipity. Uh, you need a better gang name, bro. Uh, we're gonna... Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so, oh, the little girl, I was just like, oh, God, this, this story's depressing. She, she was inspired by Lynx and led the revolt and paid the price. As you do sometimes in a rebel- a slave rebellion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that just kind of devastated Lynx. And, you know, he just tells her the truth. And any, any goodness that, any goodness left in her is gone. Destroyed. Thanks a lot, Batman. 
not his fault. It's always his fault. But I just love it. So, I mean, it's, you know, Batman's whatever the story needs because it's like, you know, oh, hell, he, in one story, he can take on 50 guys without breaking a sweat. But this time, him and Lynx are just like, oh, we got to get away before these, like, group of, like, 10 guys, like, kills <laughs> skill levels and he could be tired i mean no man's land is ex- is basically an exhausting gauntlet for that's Batman. true yeah. so you know he could have not been eating or anything so you know i take mm-hmm. the fluctuations and roll with the punches but elsewhere in gotham city bane's ex- uh preparing something with a lot of explosives for his next attack at gotham hollow records they're 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 dragging out before software. the internet apparently yeah <laughs> Hollow records. Well, out of here. well, I get that maybe you know the mysterious mastermind <coughs> Alexis had somebody maybe wiped it or tried to wipe the digital records, so all that's left is the hollow record. You know. Yes, I know. I'm just saying. I was just like, geez, Louise, can never go back to those days. I already do enough paperwork at my new job, so I can only, I mean, literally, like, triplicate. Like, I didn't even know that still existed. <laughs> I have to foul stuff. Let me tell you, that's a pain in the butt. Ugh. Paperless offices are the future that need to happen now. <laughs> Just have to spend money on infrastructure, that's all. Ugh, infrastructure. <sighs> Anyway, moving over to Batman 570, the start of uh, the code part one. Breaking the law. Break, break, breaking the law. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I can't believe I just did that reference. <laughs> so we get this is a Joker and Harley Quinn story with a little bit of gossipy Oracle. Yes, I, I love. Um, well, this is all, all these are from October 1999. Also, I love the art in this first one, the Mike Theodato. Yeah. Like the Harley and Joker stuff, yeah. This is like a big Joker and Harley story. Yeah, some new gang thought they were going to take over some territory. It's like, surprise! It's Joker and Harley Quinn. You ain't getting nothing. Nope. (laughs) Fighting over this skyscraper and... I guess an apartment building, because Harley finds, like, untouched apartments starting on the 27th floor. Yeah. Nice. She got super acrobatics going. And then she found uh, a book titled The Code Laws of Lamore. And I'm just like, is this supposed to be the Kama Sutra? I feel like this is supposed to be the Kama Sutra. <laughs> I thought it was like a dating but you know. Yeah, like that a, will make you make your yeah. man marry you or whatever. But I was just like, I don't, I don't, I see the jo- Joker is asexual. Just to be honest, all the advances that Harley puts towards him, him and Jughead are asexuals, changed my mind. <laughs> asexual or bisexual? Asexual, like as a no interest in how how Joker has a daughter. I have no idea. I don't buy it. I don't know because I I mean sometimes he's in the mood for Harley, and I don't know. It just seems like sometimes he's in and the then mood she for... gets a pie in the face. Hello. Hello. <laughs> but uh, then sometimes it seems like he's in the mood for Batman. As you do. Uh. <laughs> Eroticism in Batman stories, whether it's intentional or not. Subtext or regular text, take your pick. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Um, anyway, yeah. So then it's like Oracle's like, yeah, I'm studying Joker's activities and he's got some new territory. And I don't know, it's just like I don't know, it's just a game that he said she said in this issue. <laughs> I, it's just I love the gossip, like you said. It's just like, oh, Harley got her own place. I don't know. I think her and Joker might be breaking up. <laughs> <laughs> and then Hunter's like at the end. She spots the posters, and it's like Joker's running for president. President of No Man's Land again. Yeah. Really petite. The pig. <laughs> former cop. <laughs> former cop turned No Man's Land strong guy. Bullet. Like, for I can't everybody. believe that's his official name, the pig. <laughs> Yikes. You need a better PR person. But he must shout that, you know, I have a bullet for every man, woman, and child in Gotham to everybody, because even on the posters, they knew to put bullets for everyone. Yeah. Um, the flashback scenes in Harley's memories are from uh, the Batman Adventures Mad Love. And then I feel the pig running for president is a reference to the 1960 presidential election. Yeah, they mentioned that. I forget yeah. if it this issue or the next one. Yeah. So I was just like, John Kennedy and Richard Nixon, take your pick. No. I, have no, I have no, I have no dog in that fight. 
Although I love Nixon from a historical disaster aspect. I absolutely do. <laughs> anyway, yeah. This, this issue is just like, it was a fun little break. Mm-hmm. It wasn't as dark as the last two, so I think that was also part of it. <laughs> like, we gotta lighten this storyline up a little bit. And I knew, like, I know, like, No Man's Land, you can have stories that aren't, like, so much Batman centric, but it's like, what was he doing in this arc? He just seemed like he's just like sitting in the basement the whole time. He's getting the he's getting the deets, bro. I guess. Okay, so the next one, uh, Detective Comics seven thirty seven. Yep. Why does Joker on the cover look like a bootleg Green Goblin? Like, I just cannot. It's just the lighting, I guess. Uh, yeah, but yeah, the, his white skin's like glowing green. It seems. Yeah, I don't like that. Don't like it. <laughs> it, it hardly choking Huntress. Well, that's a cat fight I can get behind. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. Um, so yeah, we kind of pick up where Joker's playing the, his election campaign. We do have a drop for everything. <laughs> Holly and Josh, and I'm just like. Never trust a guy named Josh. No! <laughs> Change my mind. <laughs> but then it's like, Joker notices that Harley's like, uh, kind of getting close to Josh, and I'm just like, mm. or the other way around, everyone well, it's the same thing. It's like, you know, when Harley's all over Joker, he doesn't care about her, but then when she's like, trying, kind of giving him the cold shoulder, he's like, I want that Harley Quinn. Typical man. <laughs> no offense, or maybe take offense. I don't care. Um, elsewhere in Gotham, Billy uh, and his men are fighting Killer Croc. Damn it, they love just throwing Killer Croc in when they can. Yeah. Really, really. He is like the cameo king in No Man's Land. But yeah, Huntress arrives. Oh, poor Huntress. So disrespected. <laughs> well, yeah, Huntress has a, uh, a little uh, tumble with uh, Harley after Josh leaves after he was trying to make the moves on Harley. I know. I know. That was a little awkward. Like, Hunter, she's just gonna be spying on them like that? Cool. Yeah, and then we get, <laughs> like I said, we get a little knocked down with Harley and Huntress. Yeah. And then she hears, like, about a bomb. And so Joker's like, uh, I'm gonna teach you how to <laughs> survive an explosion. The He's Josh, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's no trick. You're gonna die. Cause he caught, yeah, cause he caught, he caught Josh, and he's like, hey, yeah, I knew this guy. Yeah, he made him look like he, it was magician guy. He made himself look like he always exploded, but he never, he always survived. And Josh, he puts his vest on Josh. What's the trick? Oh, the trick is there is no trick. Then just from a mile away, to see a big. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Joker! What are we gonna do with you? And then, like, later on, I guess, as we wrap up the story, or- Oracle's telling Batman about the events in Joker's turf, and Batman's like, I want facts! Facts mm-hmm. over feelings! <laughs> and then Oracle's like, there- I'm not sure if there are facts in No Man's Land. <laughs> exactly, Batman's still sitting in the basement. <laughs> facts over feelings, hunty! <laughs> like, I was just like, I can't believe Batman. Like, well, then you go out and get your own damn information. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I would have said like people do not put Bruce in his place let me tell you like none of the Bat family with the exception of Nightwing on occasion puts Bruce in his place where he needs to be that's right <laughs> and finally a not so bad Azrael story oh yeah Azrael 58 from November 1999 um so that we start in a uh, park row. There's three guys trying to steal supplies from the medical center. Like as always lately, it just feels like we're always at the medical center. Well, yeah, that's where Hasbro's basically working now. <laughs> yeah. So you know, he he handles them with ease. He goes back to Leslie's bunker. Mm-hmm. I did it again. I I can't. I, I know. It's like wash, rinse, repeat with this part of the story. So, yeah. And then we kind of, so he goes out to look for a place where he could sleep. And I'm just like, oh, okay. Can't, can't sleep you, in Leslie's bunker. Okay. You can't <laughs> sleep on a cot or how even. Even, I swear, the floor of a tent would be better than, like, you know, the street. Yeah. So, he's out there wandering around. He glimpses, like, a shadow on the wall behind him. He turns around to see who it was. But it's gone. 
Like, this is the weird part, right? He thinks that it's his father's shape. Well, he does say in the beginning of this that she, like, Leslie asked him when he slept last, and he's like, I don't know, three or four days ago. <laughs> I mean, you can go 72 hours pretty easily if you have military training especially, like, in cyber training and stuff. So that's okay. Four days is where you start pushing it, even for, like, military trained people, so I get you. Yeah, but yeah, then he runs the. But he does run into your old friend Mitzi from a couple of issues back. I know. I was like, "Damn it, Mitzi, you ruined everything." Yeah, um, she was running. Uh, she was running from uh, Uncle Jerry. I was like, "Where's Tom?" <laughs> oh, geez. Tommy, tomorrow you say? <laughs> Scroll down. Um. Anyway, Azrael didn't understand at first, but then she like starts to explain and it's like oh okay maybe there's more to this whole thing it's a weird story but it's not bad uh uh no it's uh, you know then uh Azrael thinks he sees Saint Dumas oh Gotham that's something Gotham did better too (laughs) honestly but again it's like you know he hasn't slept in a couple days and he did have when he first appeared he had that assassin programming in his head, so. Yeah, true. And then, I just love, it's like, uh, the boat sunk nearby Dixon's docks. <laughs> I'm like, what's up, Chuck Dixon? Yeah. <laughs> you gotta love those little Easter eggs. I know, and he, like, who just, like, sinks a rowboat? You gotta be a, a sadistic SOB to sink a rowboat. Definitely agree. Like, it's well, a rowboat. It'll take care of itself in the end. <laughs> I guess, I don't know, unless someone just left that there as, like, a uh, contingency or something. I don't know. That's the worst plan, D, F, Z, whatever. Or unless <laughs> someone did that, but, you know, someone just did it for craps and giggles before No Man's Land. I don't know. I don't know, but yeah. Um, but when he, when he moved, removed his mask and then let, let Mitzi kiss him, I was like, I'm so confused. <laughs> what are you confused about? I don't know why, why why we needed this at that particular point. And then Missy and her mom get inside the boat and sail away from Gotham. And what happened to the landmines? Or the mines in the river? Eh. The fish exploded them all. It's I, fine. I guess. So, you know, JP goes back to Leslie with his tail between his legs and starts to help her with the chores in the med- medical center. And then she lectures him on life lessons because that's how we wrap up every single one of these issues now. <laughs> hmm? And then, like, we had, we kind of glimpse back out to the Gotham River and Mitzi and her mother are sailing the boat. And then there's a fog and then it's complete whiteness. And then uh, Mitzi's mom realizes that Jerry was somewhere very close to them. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> But this is the weird thing about this issue because it's both a no man's land and a day of judgment tie in issue. Yes. So I was just like, okay, that's what that's where like all the ghost like I had to remember that. Like why I was like all the like the ghostly stuff started happening. So that could have been Saint Dumas, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So yeah. Judgment Day of Judgment wasn't that bad, but it could have been like it it's one of those things like you can't have too many like it's like the Constantine in New 52. Like, you just keep running into all these, like, events. Yes. <laughs> no yes. good can come of it. You can't get your own story off the ground that way. And did you see the next issue blurb? Who's going to be in the next issue of Azrael? Oh, I don't remember who. Catwoman. Oh, okay. That should be fun. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I forget if it's before or after those Catwoman issues. But, yeah, so getting a little extra Catwoman there. Noise. I mean, this Catwoman's pretty decent. I, mm-hmm. I, I, I just, um, I'm trying to still get into the new Catwoman book at this point, but yeah, I'm, I'm still reading it. I, I mean, it's all right. I still don't know about that costume, but it's <laughs> gotta ventilate those armpits. <laughs> <gasps> we need a Charlie. We need a Catwoman char uh, ventilation for Charlie Esser. <laughs> Come on, everyone! His birthday's coming up, January twentieth. <laughs> Oh my god. I think anything with spandex, Charlie would be happy. <laughs> Except that menace Spider Man. We'll get him venom and then his children will love him better. Or, ooh, even <gasps> better yet, Toxin. Look at him with Toxin costume. <laughs> oh. Or give him the Annie Red Wig and go, you're, you're, 
Cletus Cassidy now from the Venomverse. <laughs> oh, good lord. <laughs> anyway, that sums it up. Like I said, it was a pretty solid five stories. Yeah, I mean, it's basically, it was five issues, but it was like three stories, because it was first four yeah. or two arcs, yeah. <laughs> five okay issues, you know. I think, was it next next episode, we get finally get to that Bane stuff, I think? <laughs> Is it? I can't even remember now. I'll look, but I'm pretty sure. Because <laughs> it's just like, okay, how long are we dragging this out already? <laughs> Especially when you had to go, like, I mean, well, there's so many bat books, it was still week to week, but still. Yeah. Um, like, I'm just glad that they did trim down the bat books, but Batman Incorporated did not have to be one of them. Hashtag still better. Oh, um, next, next uh, episode, going downtown and underground. That's what she said. Hey! <laughs> 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 I told you not to eat those brownies before we recorded. <laughs> On that note. All right. On that note. That's right. Part 11 of No Man's Land. Just heard it. So send us your thoughts. There's only eight more to go. <laughs> and we're also uh, covering the last episodes of Gotham. So send your thoughts in for those too. Uh, Email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com. Follow Comic Capers on Facebook, on Twitter at Comic Capers Pod, and at CL Sidekicks. Uh, CL Sidekicks on Instagram for all your needs. And the voicemail, 614 382 2737. That's 614 38 Capes. And the Lilith. If you nerds want to live tweet or send me stuff via Twitter, you can find me at Lil Hellfire. If you want to hang out with me on the gram, you can find me at Hellfighter 86 And of course, if you want to talk the big blue Boy Scout and or Smallville, you can find me at Save Me Pod on Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, and or Instagram. And if you want to know the, the rules for catching a man, don't go to Harley, <laughs> go to Little Hellfire. Please don't. My methods only work like 2% of the time. <laughs> She's like, throw the little ones back. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. It's such a wasteland here. <laughs> like we said, join us next time for part 12. Uh, going down. What, going downtown and underground. <laughs> going oh downtown, my. underground, to the ground. What? Just a mess. <laughs> Man, bless this mess. <laughs> We'll, we'll find out together what's 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 Bane up to with explosives at the Hall of Records. Hmm. Meanwhile, at the Hall of Records. <laughs> <laughs> but you know he's working with somebody. There's always a man in a suit behind all this, all of that shenanigans. As it is in real life. That's right. Remember, no one escapes no man's land. At least for eight more weeks. <laughs> 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 <laughs>